about nine weeks ago, I flew with a friend of mine 3,000 miles and 35 hours in a 1963 172 from Alaska down to Oshkosh, Wisconsin. We dropped it off here at New View Technologies where we're getting an extreme panel makeover done. It's beautiful. I'm going to take you behind the scenes. We're going to see it all come together and all the new modern things that will make this an airplane for the 21st century. Before we dive in and get going on the panel, it's worth mentioning that this kind of work just doesn't happen overnight. It takes a lot of time, a lot of effort. A handful of weeks went by from the time I dropped off the airplane, which you guys saw in the last episode, to the time when I came back. There's a lot of work to be done. We've got to design. There are many parts to be ordered. We're tearing out all the old wiring. More design after that. A lot of the work went on behind the scenes with everything coming together, as you can see here from the footage Jessica captured when I wasn't there. In the meantime, it was sun and fun in Florida, so I took a trip down south. First, I visited my friend Josh from the Aviation 101 YouTube channel. He lives in Texas. So we flew around Texas a little bit. We got some famous barbecue. About to take on Texas barbecue. And then we flew from San Marcos to Orlando along the coastline, seeing New Orleans from the air. That was a new one for me. So that was a real good trip with him. In Orlando, we spent a handful of days flying in formation as friends, seeing the sights, and going to Sun and Fun. I'd fly with my friend Cameron, who you guys have probably seen before in his beautiful 172, and Josh with his girlfriend Chelsea. We'd visit places like Cedar Key, which is a really unique airstrip, a good place to land right there, kind of sandwiched in between some beaches. We'd do dinner in Vero Beach, a crazy trek to see alligators from these airboats, which by the way, those airboats had Lycoming engines on them. Flew to a baseball game and much more. Eventually, we'd end up at Sun of Fun, where we got to meet and see friends again after it was canceled the year prior. Great to see everyone and great to catch up. All in all, it was good to be back, good to be a part of that, and of course, it was a way to pass the time while I patiently waited for this panel to get completed. While I was out there having fun and doing some work at Sun of Fun, the crew at New View Technologies was busy at work in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. And oh, did I mention that we flew our flight school Cessna 172 2-3 uniform down there from Alaska? If you haven't caught the series yet, you need to go check it out. But I know that many of you are following along, so we'll keep going on. But if you haven't seen the series of us flying down, you need to go see it. Go subscribe, check it out. My eventual plan, of course, is to show up and foresee and document the process of putting 2-3 uniform back together with all the new parts and components and see what they've done at New View. <coughs> all right, we're here in the hangar at New View Tech. It's after hours, everyone's gone home. It's been a long day of work here on day one of me being here. Today was actually a really big day. Some fairly large components came in to tie everything together. So I'm gonna show you guys some of that and also show you some of the details and things that have happened during the day and we're going to check out what has happened here. So this is perhaps the biggest component of the entire thing. Of course, it's the, the beauty in front. It's the, you know, the cover of the book, right? This panel from Nimbus down in Miami in Fort Lauderdale. This is a beautiful panel. We wanted one single piece. We wanted everything to fit inside. Jessica did a, a great job planning it and designing it. And that design not only has to do with you know the aesthetic value of the front of the panel, but it has to do with what's behind the scenes. When we opened up this panel, we really had no idea what was behind it, and so we had to get a good idea of what we could actually do. There were actually quite a few limitations in this older 172 
where we couldn't put uh, things on the radio stack, say down below here, because of the way the, the yoke comes forward. That's just a limitation of the design of the aircraft. And so you have to make some decisions based on that where you can actually put things. And you're limited also with the space behind the panel, how far that control column comes forward and what you can put there. This is really exciting. This next part is a doozy. There are wires everywhere. It is like a gigantic spaghetti bowl of electronics in here, of wires. It is just crazy. Jesse has been working on this component all day, and I can tell you that from someone who doesn't know about this process, it is extremely complicated. There are tons of schematics and drawings and things that you have to follow to wire each little wire into each little component of the airplane. So today, he was finishing up a lot of the harnesses behind the scenes that will go into fitting all those into the avionics that we put on the panel and put the panel on the plane. When we came in at the at the very beginning when we flew in from Alaska, Daniel and I had an opportunity to tear the panel apart and break everything off and, uh, and kind of have some hands-on just taking out the old and bringing in the new. When you tear down an airplane and you see behind the scenes for the first time, you learn a lot about where it's been. 63, 172, obviously there was a lot done in those years, not only from the original structure, but Cessna improved things over time and each model year is just a little bit different in the features and things that they added. And so you really don't know what is behind the scenes until you actually pull everything off and then you can evaluate it. You really don't know what you're getting into with any airplane until you remove everything and see what's going on behind the scenes and then you can see what you can actually do. So that's been a large part of our process. All of this harnessing and and uh, engine monitor stuff that's coming in here the audio panel and all of these different parts in the plane are ready to hook up essentially we're almost there and that's really going to be coming together in the next few days and i'm just really excited to get the panel in here and start putting the avionics in and plugging them in however it is very cool to see behind the scenes and just how everything has been connected and coming together and I have a whole different respect for the the people in these avionics shop that do such a good job at that it is uh, it is not something to be taken lightly it is quite a process so yesterday when I came in this was the first thing I saw now the paint job on this airplane has been so bad for so long that I thought there was no possible chance that we could get anything restored on this plane. Now, for those of you that have seen my plane before, this I thought was matte orange instead of gloss. However, Brian here at New View picked me up from the airport, brought me in, and this was the first thing I saw was how much work he had done on this airplane. And we're, we're talking really rough surfaces all over the airplane, what he called oxidation that had happened all over the aircraft, all surfaces, especially those surfaces that are, uh, you know, like horizontal, the wings, the horizontal stabilizer, anything where the weather is really coming down on it, the snow is settling on it, was really a big problem. But I am super impressed with how well he did. Look at this mirror finish on this thing. He is a rock star. The way he explained it was, it gets a couple extra years out of the airplane to buy me some time to figure out the paint job. Now, that's gonna be something I do down the road. Obviously, getting the panel done and all the avionics is a very expensive endeavor, and I've got to get the airplane back to Alaska for the flying season there, so it's certainly not something that I wanna do right now, but this gets me a nice looking airplane, gets it all polished up as best as it can be, and buys us uh, a couple years. So, really, really happy with that, and it's, you know, it's nice to get an old looking airplane looking nice and shiny and we did the best we could on that so props to brian again hey y'all a real quick message here if you're enjoying this video and doing flight training now or in the near future check out our online ground school pass the written test prepare for flight training and become a safe aviator and you get to support this channel at the same time join today at angleofattack.com all right back to the video Ryan from Super Aero stopped by. If you don't know who he is, go check out his YouTube channel. What's up? You made it. I made it. 
It was a little sketchy, but got it done. What was sketchy? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was like, I was feeling pretty good about no, all that. No, it looked great, man. This is fun. I've never like just. Flown into Oshkosh. I mean, I've flown to like Basler, but I've never yeah. just like gone to another hangar. Mm -hmm. Sure. You know. All right, Ryan from Super Arrow here. What's up? Flew up from. Are you based in Madison? Uh, Timmerman. Timmerman. Sweet. So he's here to. He's here to see the. Uh, the project. I'm gonna take a lot of pictures and then tweet them out. Okay, tweet them. Ryan does a fantastic Super Aero Live every Wednesday talking to a notable person in the aviation industry. Ryan is a local to Wisconsin and always a hoot. I just love hanging out with him. Funny dude, and I had to show him uh, two, three uniform. There she is, looking a little disheveled, huh? I think it looks pretty shiny. It looks really shiny. But like my Patreon supporters are like super into uh, building. Okay. Right? And so we're always talking every Wednesday nights. Every Wednesday night we do like a little Zoom chat. And we're always talking about panels and stuff. And everyone's just like, throw the G3X in there. Call it a day. But like I would miss this mm -hmm. stuff. Yep. Does that make me old, or does that make me... Well, you know you can tweak the J3X so it has. It no, I know, like but I like the idea yeah. of, like... Oh. Here we go. I like this camera. Great. I feel bad that I bought, like, a really expensive cinema camera. Yeah. Because this is so much easier to use than Your my cinema camera. Your eight thousand dollar rig. I got a FX3. <coughs> but, like, this is over... Like, just filming that one little scene with you guys makes me regret everything. Now one thing none of you have seen yet, unless you've seen some of our social media and you've already seen the panel, but you haven't seen the yokes. So as soon as someone takes a look at our finished panel, they mention these uh, beautiful yokes that we had made. So with all the quality work we were doing on the panel itself, with everything being overhauled or brand new, I just couldn't imagine there being an eyesore with the old worn down yokes. We just wanted to go the extra mile, make it look really nice and wow. A true showstopper for sure. You know, again, it's one of those things that when someone sees the panel, they point out how beautiful the yokes are when they are actually in the panel. It looks really, really nice. So just wait until you see these inside that cockpit all nestled in their new home. This is what's next. This is the leather yoke wrap from Aviation X Aircraft Interiors in Conroe, Texas. These guys did a fantastic job. Now, I could have just left two through uniform in its previous state with the yolks undone which are in pretty rough shape and not do anything however we got these uh, stripped painted sent off to oscar lopez at aviation x aircraft interiors they did an amazing job these yolks are going to be a splash of color a splash of style two three uniform style to really polish things off so we're very very excited about those and what that means for tying the entire panel together. Of course, we have some things already built into those, like push to talk and something else I'll tell you guys about later that's really exciting. So lots of great components coming together. Most of them are practical and things that, that are needed to get this plane IFR, but some of them are these nice to haves to really polish off the panel um, while we're at it. So this may be the only time 2-3 uniform is upgraded ever. So let's let's get after it and do it the right way, right? So those yokes are looking awesome. So as you guys have been watching these videos, we've been getting a ton of questions about our specific project, the cost, the components, and why I chose what. And I welcome those comments. That's totally cool. You guys can ask as many questions as you want. But the truth is that we got some really great guidance and advice from Jessica and the team at New View Technologies. So if you want to talk about your panel project with their team and what's specific to your airplane, give them a call at their number here on the screen, or you can just go to their website at newviewtech.com. Just tell them that you saw our amazing panel on YouTube and uh, you'd like to have a chat. And, you know, there's no obligation here at all. They just love to talk to you. So reach out and uh, feel free to ask your questions there. Okay, I'm going to stick my head in here and talk about this carburetor a little bit. Now, one of the benefits of having this airplane sitting around here for so long in the hangar while they designed the panel and figured out what was behind the scenes and we 
We talked about all the different components, how they're gonna fit together, what I wanted. They got to look at the airplane a little more and found a couple things that needed to be taken care of. So actually there were some pretty serious issues with my carburetor and they, they sent it off to be overhauled. Ended up being a lot of rust in there, some things that were very loose and wore down. Obviously something like the carburetor that mixes the fuel and the air to be combusted in the engine is incredibly important. They found it, they overhauled it, and I got to have a really good look today when they pulled it out of the box after it came back from the overhaul shop. The mechanic Lauren here, he he took me through and showed me every little component and what it does, and I got to see inside the carburetor. So let me show a little bit of that process to you guys now. This throttle shaft, the bushings here and here were really loose and sloppy which means you can't adjust your mixture properly. It's gonna kind of be all over the radar, depending on how much. So you never precisely adjust your mixture with that loose. So that's all been tightened up. Throttle, uh, everything's been rebuilt in there, new float. Everything's nice and tight, like brand new. And what this does, this is, your, this is your fuel inlet. What happens is the bowl fills up, this float will rise up, and it'll, it'll shut this, it'll shut your your bowl off. That's your that's your fuel supply. As the engine uses fuel, the float drops, opens the valve. And then this this was replaced too, right? That looks all new. Yep, the throttle plate, I believe. I might have just cleaned that up. Yeah, we have another one of those kits next door. I think they just cleaned that up because here is the old throttle shaft. Mm. Uh, yeah, there's just two screws they take out, they just cleaned that up. And you can see on here. Yeah. They used to all be in here. Oh, it's all worn right yeah. there. We also mm -hmm. have it's actually grooved in. Okay. Oh wow! Right there. So this was just okay. slopping around. Wow. So whatever you choose your mixture adjustment, this is for that to be accurate. This has to seal. With that not sealing, your mixture is kind of going to be bouncing all over the place. And then where is the? Uh, you guys tapped in for the carb temp as well. Yeah, I'm tapped in. Okay. Just gotta modify that because this little guy is gonna see. We gotta clear that so that thread's in there. Oh yeah. So let's have, uh, get that get that lip right there off. Yeah, a we just gotta bit. Re relieve that so we can thread that in. Very cool. Well, I'm really glad we caught that and got it all. They also changed. Got it addressed. This. this is the uh, plunger. This is the accelerator pump. Mm -hmm. When you stroke your throttle, you get an extra shot of fuel. This was working, but it's it's pretty it's worn. Well, I can tell you that something actually wasn't working, and I think it's probably that because if you advance the throttle too fast, it would stumble. Yep, it, it, it would even quit on me one time. That's this little guy right here. Okay, that would be causing that. Yep. this is going to give you that little extra squirt of fuel so yep. the engine will pick Just up. Just has right that away. reserve, right? Yep, that when you a little squirt to, until the carburetor catches up. So if this isn't working, that's a common problem. Yep. You advance the throttle, it's going to stumble until it catches up. There we go. And this is your mixture adjustment. Mm-hmm. And this screw is sets your idle mixture. Hmm. Because if you notice when the throttle is closed, there's the there's the idle supply right there. So theoretically interesting. Man, you're teaching me all sorts of stuff. So as soon as you crack this open, yeah. Yeah, then you're now, getting now you're using this right. mixture. Okay. But for just when you're idling, throttle closed, this adjusts your idle mixture. So theoretically after our tests and stuff, this might be something we need to adjust here. Most likely we'll need to adjust this yeah. here. Wow. I was looking for about a 10 to a 50 RPM rise as it comes up. So it's rising and shut off. Mm -hmm. This is adjusted properly. All right, so I think that was absolutely fascinating. Uh, I've never seen inside a carburetor, certainly not my carburetor. And just to get a behind the scenes look on what's going on and have some more education on the different parts of the carburetor was was very cool for me. I hope you guys learned something as well. One extra thing we're getting with this is we're getting carb temp, which I've never had before. Obviously living in Alaska, lots of moisture around the coast where I live, cold temperatures, carb ice is an issue. And so now I'm going to have a, a carb temp monitor that will allow me to see what's going on with the carburetor. So that's an extra little plus I get on top of just getting the carburetor done right so that the engine continues to run well. Jessica is eager. You have to ask. Oh. Right.
Ready when you are, Jesse. Right now, I can't show you what it is because Chris would hurt me. There's a thing that's happening. Nope, 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 nope. <laughs> All right, Ryan's going to be here for the big moment. We're about to put the Super panel cool. in. This is, this is it. This is the moment. As you can see, the panel is coming together really well. It takes a lot of work to get all of these bits and pieces to meet here at the same time, everything fitting, everything working, and everyone working together as a team. We've got the main structure in now, and we're really getting close. We're getting to that time where we can start putting all the components in and plugging in the wires, essentially. Okay, it's been another good long day of work here on the panel. Um, Jessica's working hard into the night. It's almost 10 p.m. now. I've just been hanging out, helping with whatever I can help with. So one of the biggest projects today, the biggest project, was the actual panel. So it took a lot of work in and out, in and out, to uh, trim things, to file things, to make sure that every little... Uh, piece fit is mostly uh, an issue with the powder coating that was on the inside of, of some of the openings so got a lot of that figured out got the the glare shield on and that entire process just kind of took all day so now there's already progress being made on putting the instruments in and getting all of the wires connected to where they need to be a lot of the avionics stuff is already connected to the harnesses but the circuit breakers need to be hooked up the switches along the top were all hooked up we've got the usbs hooked up the ELT hooked up so it's accelerating fairly quickly now um, getting really close on on most of it and good positive day good progress Jessica do you have anything to say from down below no she's busy and focused so on the next video we're going to see all the final pieces come together completing the extreme panel makeover it's gonna be very exciting to see all those pieces finally be put in place and we'll even see 2-3 Uniform start up for the first time in several months with all the pieces working in harmony. So that's going to be a very exciting episode. You're not going to want to miss that at all. So make sure that you subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss any of that. And of course, like the video if you liked it and got something out of it. Should be a blast as always. I'll see you next time. So until then, fly safe and throttle on. <laughs>